Coming up on Point News, the election is drawing closer and supporters of Hillary Clinton have been busy in the burg. The top Democrat leaders hitting the campaign trail right here in the city. And a Point Park professor receives a major award. Meet the Emmy Award winner coming up. Sidney Crosby came back for a full practice. Find out if he was able to play against the Florida Panthers. Point News starts now. Live from the Point Park University Broadcast Center in downtown Pittsburgh, this is Point News. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Dovey. And I'm Blaine King. The presidential race is nearing the finish line, but the two candidates are still campaigning until the end. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have been traveling across the country in an attempt to win over the American voters. The key battleground state of Florida has Trump two points ahead in a recent poll. Overall, Clinton has a five-point lead in the election. As a reminder, Election Day is on November the 8th. Vice President Joe Biden campaigned Tuesday for a Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton at Chatham University. Biden addressed to crowd about 600 people at the university's athletic fitness center, stressing Pennsylvania's importance in the upcoming election. He also spoke about how important the jobs, economy, and debt are and the importance of getting an education. Local universities also played host to President Obama. Carnegie Mellon University and the University of Pittsburgh held the White House Frontiers Conference, which showcased technological innovation. Point News reporter Alex Grubbs has the story. It, it was a horseback riding accident that took away Andreas Sundaram's ability to walk. Uh, I'm a wheelchair user, and often I get somewhere where I want to cross the street, and well, there's no curb cut, and so um, I have to go and find an alternate route. But as a rehabilitation scientist, Andrea is also inventing ways he won't have to find a way around. Take a look at his latest project. He calls it a MeBot, a mobility enhancement robotic wheelchair. This will allow him to ride at an angle with the seat still level, and it'll allow him to do much more. This right here may look like a video game, but for people in wheelchairs, it'll allow them to gain mobility with their hands. An interface on the wheelchair communicates through Bluetooth with the arm and hands of MeBot. Just watch what it can do. Our goal is to give enough support to let people to uh, figure out how to do their life independently. This project as the University of Pittsburgh's Human Engineering Research Lab is just one of the technologies happening in Pittsburgh. And all of the innovation in the Steel City is a big reason President Obama chose to hold his first National Frontiers Conference here. And that's why I've been so committed to science and innovation, not just so that we can restore someone's sense of touch, but so we can revitalize communities. It featured everything from technology to healthcare to space. While the conference allowed President Obama to get a first-hand look at what the future may look like, those who can benefit most from what's on display want the future to be now. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to take it out of the lab, although I keep, uh, I keep mentioning, you know, let me take me bought home. Researchers say that could be a reality in five years for Sundaram and the many others who need it. Reporting for Point News, I'm Alex Groves. The First Lady of the United States came to Pittsburgh to show her support for presidential candidate Hillary Clinton at the University of Pittsburgh. Point News reporter Tanisha Law has the story. First Lady Michelle Obama is coming out here to Pittsburgh at the University of Pittsburgh Fitzgerald Fieldhouse to campaign for Hillary Clinton. This comes days after the debate with Republican nominee Donald Trump. As you can see over here, about 40 people have been standing out here waiting in line to get into the rally. And that number grew as they gathered around the Fieldhouse. Pitt student Matt Cunningham joined hundreds of others to hear Michelle Obama really say like she's saying. with Hillary really looking forward to hopefully being hopefully to hit, shake her hand I would really like to shake her hand I got to shake um, Hillary's hand last year when she came in Joe Biden's when he was on campus last year so I'm hoping to get her on that list as well people of all ages were in the crowd well I came to my grandma to basically support Michelle Obama because she's beautiful and she's smart but college students were the main focus for the first lady 
Mrs. Obama referred to young voter turnout for her husband's success in winning the presidency twice. Your questions, your answers to these questions on election day will determine who sits in the Oval Office after Barack Obama. And millennials feel that voting is essential for this election. Your democratic duty is like to vote. Like if you ever complain that you're, the government's not responding, it's because you're not, if you're, and if you don't vote, like it's just contradictory. If you want anything to get done in your local policy, it's as important to vote up and down your ballot. for your Election day is November 8th. And with both parties saying the election could all come down to Pennsylvania, expect both candidates to stop in our region often between now and then. Reporting for Point News, I'm Alex Grubbs. Former Pennsylvania Attorney General Kathleen Kane was sentenced to 10 to 23 months in prison. She was convicted on charges of perjury and abuse of her office. Kane, a Democrat, was elected as Pennsylvania's Attorney General in 2012. Kane was taken to Montgomery County Jail but posted a $75,000 cash bail. She remains free while she appeals the sentence. Point Park, professor, Point Park University professor Gina Catanzarite recently won an Emmy, a regional Emmy out of Philadelphia. Point News reporter Trevor Sheets spoke with her right after the win. The Atlantic Emmys took place in September in Philadelphia, PA, and Point Park was well represented, not by students, but by some professors who are doing great work outside of the classroom. Gina Catanzarite, an adjunct professor here at Point Park University in the School of Communications, took home her ninth Emmy last month. She won in the category of Best Health, Environment, or Science Program or Special. Her documentary, Bedtime Story, The Troubling Truth About Teens and Sleep, took on a topic that all college students can appreciate, sleep deprivation in young people and what students can do to address it. And it was about the disconnect that teens have between the amount of work they have to do during a school day, the activities, the schoolwork, their, their homework, and what their body clocks want them to do, which is go to sleep later, sleep in later. Katanzarite produced a documentary, but as she will tell you right away, she had a lot of help in making this project. And one of those people was another Point Park professor, Michelle Wright. Mm -hmm. Wright is also an anchor for WTAE here in Pittsburgh and did all the narration for the documentary. I got to go into the control room at WQED months ago and start going over some of the work that she had done. And it was spectacular from the start. Gina knows how to do a show. In addition to contributing to the documentary, Wright had a part to play in some awards her station won as well. WTAE won for overall excellence as well as community service for Project Bundle Up. Coming up on Point News, forget the beer guy. What lawmakers are working on that could let you have a mixed drink at the next Penns game? And see how Point Park is teaching some of its stu dance students to get to the other side of the classroom. Future inspiration, wisdom. We are a social people. We share inspiration, wisdom, creations, and memories. We share what makes us laugh and what angers us. Built on the notion of a free flow of ideas, our country thrives on the freedom of speech. Without it, who would watch over our governing powers? And how would we share our history to make a difference for the future? It's this freedom to share that gives us a reason to listen. All right, guys, any questions on the script? Are we good to go? Yep. yep. Ready. Should be good. All right, great. Cool. All right, yeah, camera three set up right there. Camera two. Right. Use the ball when you're moving this around, but set up for the two shots is right there. Weather, how are we doing? It go right. Perfect. Welcome back to Daybreak. I'm Sarah Mackin with the real host, Adrian Bill, was seen snuggle up in all right, prompter. We got everything in. We're good to go. Key Pro, everything loaded. We're good to go. All right, Tyler. Any questions? Uh, that shot looks fine. Like three, two, one. Bring up camera two. Open mics. Q talent. Welcome to Daybreak. I'm Blaine King. 
Thanks for tuning in. I'm Aubrey Henkin. And I'm Aaron Myler. And, and this, this is, is Entertainment, Entertainment on Point. Point. Beyonce has surprised us again. Kanye West just tweeted. This was a huge weekend at the box office. A fan favorite TV show just got canceled. Guess what band is coming to the city? And the award went to. But did you see her engagement ring? Her outfit was awful. I would fire her stylist. Tune in for all of your Hollywood gossip and pop culture news. Entertainment on Point. Get into the point of pop culture. Yeah. <laughs> Dance majors here at Point Park get the chance to be on the other side of the art form with a student choreography project. In the Conservatory of Performing Arts program, dancers who are earning their Bachelor's of Arts degree have to choreograph a piece during the fall semesters. Juniors or dancers who are in their third semester of the composition class must create a five to eight minute piece. This includes casting, choreographing, and choosing music and costumes and controlling the overall lighting design. Honestly been such a positive and amazing experience. I had a wonderful cast of five and not too stressful. It's just been really enjoyable because we've all found together a piece that we're all really proud of and really love, which is I think what we're all aiming for. The show took place at the GRW Dance Complex. 39 students choreographed this fall. Young women are, b are bombarded by digital enhanced images on social media daily, and that can prompt some unhealthy comparisons. Point News reporter Veronica Buccelli has a story on how comparing oneself to another has affected a Point Park student and how the brave one brave flick got her national attention. Hashtag thigh gap, hashtag thinspiration, all phrases used on social media every day that can cause young women to compare themselves to one another, and comparisons can cause insecurities. And that certainly has been the case for Tasse Hartman. Tasse calls herself a normal person. She's a junior at Point Park University, and it may not be obvious, but she struggles with body image and acceptance issues like a lot of other young women. It all began as a child. Um, I was never accepted by my mom or my father. My father was barely in my life, but he would call my mom and tell her that I needed to go to, to the nutritionist and I needed to lose weight. I was a big girl, mm -hmm. and I think that I've actually came a long way from where I was, and now I'm actually way smaller than I was. One day, Tasse decided that she needed her friends and family to lift her spirits because she was once again struggling and feeling insecure about her body. So pretty much I was having a bad day, like really bad day. I was like, okay, I'm going to make myself feel good. So I did my makeup and I just had the sports bra on. And I was like, okay, I'll just post it for family and friends and I'll just see where it goes. Like hopefully they can lift my spirits for the day. And then it just skyrocketed get it to somewhere it was not supposed to go. Her post went viral. It was shared over 37,000 times and was liked 89,000 times on Facebook. It happened within three days, I want to say. I posted the image February 20th, if I'm correct. And then that night, it had like 720 likes. And I'm like, I don't even know these many people. And then it went to like 1,000 shares, and I'm like, what in the world? She was even featured on websites like Huffington Post and various blogs and Instagram pages. Tasse hopes that her confidence and work on self-acceptance can be inspirational to others. Tasse continues to post pictures of herself on social media, promoting positive body image and self-love. And she even plans to speak to young women publicly about how to feel pretty and how to feel good about themselves every day when they look into the mirror. Reporting for Point News, I'm Veronica Butilli. Coming up, one of the Penguins is back on the ice after an injury. Find out who. And healthcare premiums on the rise. We'll tell you about the, which plan is increasing its rates. Here on the Pioneer sideline, we talk a lot about sports in the studio, but it's beforehand when the conversation is actually interesting. I hope I have enough powder on. I don't want to be too shiny on camera. No, Trevor, I think it looks good every week you pull it off. Ah, uh, thanks, Phil. Man, your hair looks great tonight, by the way. You sure? Yeah, I mean, I got a new haircut, but it looks all right. Perfect. Hey, guys. Does this make me look fat? No. No. Oh, you look great. You look great. Yeah, Kyle. Thanks. Sports. 
Yeah! Ever wanted to be behind the mic and have the world listening to your show on campus? Well, it's just as simple as joining WPPJ, Point Park's student-run radio station, located on the second floor of Lawrence Hall, right next to the dining services. Listeners can tune in using Point Park's website or through the TuneIn app by searching WPPJ. WPPJ welcomes any new DJs that want to get involved, so be heard. Do you have what it takes? Well, no one showed up to the show tonight, and follow my lead. In three, two, take two, open mics, cue talent. Good evening and welcome to UVU News. I'm Josh Troop. We begin with breaking news out of West Penn Hall. Ready three, take three, take lower third. Traffic is backed up in the West Penn elevator line after elevator one broke down on the seventh floor. Lose lower third. Maintenance advises students to take the stairs to avoid delays. Ready two, take two. In other news, no. no. Now, you know what? I didn't sign up for this. We need crew. Join UVU. Take alien hand transition. On Monday, the Pennsylvania State Senate voted to pass legislation that would let beer distributors sell beer for the off-site consumption in any amount. The bill includes six packs and growlers to be sold. It will also allow manufacturers to ship 192 ounces of beer to consumers every month. Mixed drinks will also be allowed to be sold at state sporting venues that already sell beer. Before the bill gets to Governor Tom Wolf, the State House uh, of Representatives excuse me, must approve the measure. The weather has finally started to feel like fall with lower temperatures this week. Let's send it over to Paul Daniels to see if there will be any warmer days this weekend. Paul? Explain. Yeah, fall has really started to hit home here as we get in the stretch of late October. And uh, Thursday, obviously, it's looking pretty gloomy and rainy here in the mix with 90% chance of rain, and it's been raining pretty much all day. Let's take a look at your weekend outlook, though. And Friday, here's the story. Friday is looking like your best day of the week. No rain, very little chance at least, 10%. And then Saturday and Sunday, those, de those degrees increase, but rain 60%. So hope everyone has a happy and safe Halloween out there. We'll send it back over to the desk, though, because uh, we're changing it up. Blaine? Price hikes to the Affordable Care Act, known as Ob Obamacare, where the announces, were announced this week. Premiums could double, even triple in the next year. Insur insurers aren't just rising, raising prices, they are also downsizing their presence on the exchanges as they try to stem losses from sicker than as anticipated customers. Right now, let's head over to the Ashley Cordini who has more on this week's sports. Ashley? Thanks, Mark. Pittsburgh players seem to be on the mend this week as Penguin star Sidney Crosby made his season debut this past Tuesday. This comes after he suffered a concussion in the beginning of October during practice. He scored the first goal of the game during a second period power play, helping the Pens come to a 3-2 victory over the Florida Panthers. They play again tonight at 7 o'clock against the New York Islanders. Now moving on to more local Pittsburgh sports, Ladarius Green, who was meant to replace tight end Heath Miller for the Pittsburgh Steelers, has been out for months now with an ankle injury he received before he signed his four-year, $20 million contract. But this past Tuesday, he finally went through his first practice with the team. The Steelers have 21 days to decide if Green can be activated from the physically unable list to the perform list roster. And Cleveland is once again in the running for another championship this year. The Cleveland Indians are playing the Chicago Cubs in this year's World Series. The Indians won home field advantage in the first game out of a possible seven to be played. Last night, the Cubs tied the series as they head to Chicago, where they will play three games starting tomorrow night. And the Point Park volleyball team has some players who will be graduating this year. To celebrate, they had a senior night. Point News reporter Josh Krupp has more on that story. They say all good things must come to an end, and for members of the Point Park women's volleyball team, the end is only a few sets away. Family, flowers, and fun. That's how Shiloh Simonson will remember her senior day. It's a day that comes around every season that signals the beginning of the end of college careers. This year, four seniors and their families, all with flowers, smiles, and a day of memories that will last a lifetime. Man, people do so much to make us feel special, and I'm just going to remember just, just, I don't know, the whole walking out ceremony. It was really, it was really awesome. 
Senior Day Saturday came one game after a crushing five-set loss to conference rival Rio Grande. But Point Park bounced back, giving their coach one more memory with a Senior Day sweep of Cincinnati Christian. I have great memories on the court with them, in practice, traveling on the bus, you know, in restaurants, and uh, you know, that, that's what it's about, you know, and I'm confident that each and every one of them, as they move on in life, they're gonna do well. The days that senior Emily Meng has left on the court with fellow senior Nikki and Cortano are dwindling, but their friendship is only beginning. Just having her at the net and having her always there to smile at me, so probably miss that. I'm definitely gonna miss all the uh, all the inside jokes on the court and all the behind the scenes stuff people don't see, like the hotel rooms on trips and like the bus rides and just spending time with the team. I'm really gonna miss that. Reporting for Point News, I'm Josh Krupp. Well, that does it for this week's Point News. Be sure to join us again next Thursday, live at 2 p.m. Have a great weekend, everybody.